I've been like all patriotic today for some reason. I've got on my God Bless America shirt and my red, white, and blue shorts. And I just got my nails done today. And guess what? Mm, yep. Little patriotic bling there. I'm gonna go change into something I can paint in that I don't have to worry about if I get paint on me. So it's finally a beautiful day here in Cleveland, Ohio. It's like 80 something degrees and the sun is shining. There's a nice cooling breeze so I thought this might be a perfect day to come out and start work on my flag palettes that I sell I'll take you a look here in the background we've got them all set up outside here and last summer we put on the first coat of white paint but after sitting all winter piled up behind my shed <laughs> they look like they need another coat of white and then I'll start adding the red and the blue and then the stars So my husband was kind enough to set these all up on some tables for me so I don't have to be bending over badly and hurting my back, which is already hurting. <laughs> but um, I am using a very um, high, high semi-gloss paint for these. And it's an outdoor paint. And I've already stirred it up in the can and I poured some in here. It's going to be a lot easier to roll than trying to paint with the brush. Hopefully these will go a little bit faster than what I had to go through last year. So you're just going to load up your roller with some paint. Let's set this over here. And I'm going to actually start in this middle one because you don't want to be leaning over um, a slat that you've already painted because then you will definitely get paint all over you. So this is kind of nice. You just kind of Give it a good rolling. One slat done, only a hundred more to go. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that's on a nice sturdy part of the table so you don't have to worry about that falling. But we just thought giving this a good coat of white will make a nice base as well for the parts that are not going to be white. One more. video is being brought to you by Tags Dependable Restoration. You got any flood, fire, water, mold remediation, general handyman, and also if you need any outdoor power equipment fix, this is the guy to call John Tag 216-650-4099. Gosh, what a beautiful day thinking about doing these earlier in the month, but I'm glad I didn't because we have had such rain here. Ridiculous amounts of rain. More rain than I've seen in my 40 years. <laughs> I believe that one. But anyway, no, we did have a lot of rain and it was just difficult getting a lot of things done in the yard because you were always racing the clock as to when the next storm was gonna come. And, uh, you know, planting things this year in our garden is crazy too because 
this stuff has just been sitting in a lot of water, which is not good for your plants. I've decided that I'm only going to attempt to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. Um, and I've got a bunch more of them that I can tackle some other day, but I figured I'd at least get these done so in case anybody wanted a nice patriotic flag for their front yard for the 4th of July. This is when I get a lot of my sales, so. All right, one down. So I'm going to keep on going for the sake of not boring you with all this repetitiveness. I'll check back with you when I'm done with just this first coat of the white, which is actually the second coat because we put the first coat on back last fall. So after this, uh, I think I'm going to start applying my red stripes. So I'll check back with you then. Okay, so I've put a couple coats of white so actually these have gotten three coats of white now. All of these. And the next step is going to be to paint the red. So I've mixed up my red paint really well, poured it in a little separate work palette. And what I did was on these large, these very, very large ones, they measure, and it's not gonna be exact, and that's, that's what makes these sort of a primitive outdoor flag decoration. It's a primitive country thing and each palette is going to be not quite exact. It's going to be anywhere from 42 to 45 inches. Most of these I've measured seem to be around 43 and a half to 44 inches or so. So about every three and a quarter to three and a half inches I've marked off the lines and I want to have the 13 stripes. So we're going red, white, red, white, and so forth. So there are 13 stripes, and then I have marked off the square as to where I'm going to paint that blue and then put the stars on it. And I've been using this very long, I don't even know what you would call this thing. I don't even know what it's used for, quite frankly. <laughs> but I'm using it as the way to draw my lines across there with the pencil. And again, these are not going to be perfectly even. It might not even be perfectly straight, but it's gonna be darn close to it because in the end, I made one of these last year. It's gonna look like that. Okay, so. Back to work, and I'm going to start painting my red stripes. <laughs> so, I've gotten two of these done, and I gotta tell you, these are a pain in the butt. They're really hard to get evenly painted, and without one of these, I don't know how you would ever get these as straight as possible. But um, anyway, I'm starting on my third one. It's a tedious process, I will tell you that. All right, so this top one.
come back. I gotta go rinse this off. <laughs> too much paint on your brush because it will go underneath any little bit of air that's beneath that. So let's go this way.
paint the other side is where I keep wiping so that as you're moving it you know along the, the wood you're not going to you know spread the paint but I think before I do the second coat I'm going to go ahead and clean this off a little scrubby and get a fresh rag as well see you in a minute okay I'm back god thank god there's a breeze today because it's really warm and sunny but I'm enjoying it so as you see I've scraped all of that red paint fresh and I got a wet rag and then I also have another old rag that I don't care if it gets a bunch of paint on it and I'll just keep using that to wipe off the edge as I go. I think this is dry enough for these to get their second coat of red so I'm going to start on that now. One thing I wish I had was just another little side table, uh, like a little folding table that I could set the paint on so I don't have to keep bending down. Boy, my back is gonna be bad tonight. I could tell you that. Woo! All right, let's see. Yeah, that's dry enough. One good thing with the breezes, it sure is helping these to dry pretty quickly, so that's good. And there's not a lot of humidity in the air either. but you want to get it as close to it as you can so that's okay there hopefully I won't need this little thing for just doing the second coat <laughs> time I made these I made the mistake of trying to freehand this entire thing and it just became crazy so um, hopefully the second and third coats I don't have to use that metal thing to keep it straight if I just keep a steady enough hand it should be okay but I suggest if you ever try to make one of these that you use a straight edge for your first coat at least because man that just took forever last year trying to keep straightening those out and so forth so but still these are a lot of work
Okay, so this is with two coats. I still may do a third coat on there just because I don't like seeing any of the white a little bit showing through. And this is the one with one coat. So see, you, can, you can't get away with one coat on this. Uh-uh. Same thing there. So you can see the white coming through. But this is better. But I still think one more coat is going to do it. So these have had three coats of white, three coats of red. And of course, I messed up there and there. But that's going to be being covered with a dark blue paint. So that's going to cover that little mess up and same as there <laughs> um, but you'll see there's a couple spots where you know you you'll have some issues where you know maybe some paint dripped whatever but those you can go and touch up with like over here I'll just touch this up with some white paint with a little uh, touch-up brush um, that'll be easier to just spot hit anything that went outside of the lines but for right now these are good to go I'm gonna let those dry overnight and then I'll do the touch-ups tomorrow and do the blue and the white stars these I've just started and I penciled the marks where the stripes are going to be and I'm hopefully before the Sun goes down be able to give these their three coats of red paint and then we'll hopefully finish up tomorrow. Um, I have been working on these since, I'm trying to think now, what time did I start? About two o'clock this afternoon, and it's now almost seven o'clock, so that's five hours so far. So if you are saying to yourself, gee, that would be fun to make, um, it's very time consuming. <laughs> and this didn't even include the original first coats of the primer that we put on in the fall. And so it would be just much easier if you just bought one from me. <laughs> now that it's seven o'clock, thank God for the martinis. Now we'll see how straight those lines come out now. <laughs> okay, so these have dried almost 24 hours. I've got four coats of red on these. And today I'm going to paint these squares blue and then hit those white areas that there's been a little bit of the red where, you know, like I said, it's kind of hard when you are painting these to keep those lines perfectly straight. And so we're gonna hit those with some white again to cover up any of those pink smudges. We'll see how many of the blue, how many coats I'll have to put of that. Still a beautiful day again. Hopefully no stray showers. And there is a cooling breeze, so that's a good thing. But uh, gonna start part two of these with some blue and then touching up the white. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I've got all of them painted with the red, white, and the blue. And now I'm going back and touching up, you know, some of the uneven lines that are uh, on the white and the red. The blue is really good, but there's a little bit of, like I said, it's really hard to get that exactly even. So what I'm doing is taking just a little, uh, one of those sponge brushes, and you just load it up with a little bit. And you can take that right along the edge with a steady hand. make that a nice neat edge and then kind of give this one last little coat to the other side here. I'm going to do this edge. You have any back issues good luck with this <laughs> it really oh because you're doing a lot of bending over these big boards I'm going to continue on with this and then after these have dried completely we're going to stencil on the stars. I've got all of these done. Those look really good. Those look really good. And that one. And I've got the small one done. And this one I'm still kind of working on. Okay, so they've all been painted with multiple coats of paint. And all the lines have been neatened up as straight as possible. And now it's time to paint the stars. So I can tell you this, the palettes are cheap, the paint's not all that cheap because you want to get good outdoor paint. And the amount of time that it takes to do a couple coats of primer and then at least three or four coats of each of the colors and trying to keep the lines straight and getting a star stencil and all that good stuff. It's hours and hours of work. So if you wanna try make, making one yourself, be my guest. But if you'd like something patriotic and put one in your yard, 
or your place of business outside, um, I'd be happy to sell you one. Handmade in America. Okay, so all of these have dried overnight. All I've got left to do is stenciling on the stars. And I bought these from a craft store. I thought they were the best size for this. And you just kind of take these and match up to where about you think it should go. And I'll spread a little bit of white paint on here with a stenciling brush. And then you just hit this. Hopefully, the sun will stay out for at least a couple more hours so that this paint can kind of bake and it'll keep it from washing away if it rains on these if they, since they're outdoor flags. And then I'll do this bottom part here. And you just keep doing that. See you at the end. And they're finally done. Oh my gosh, two and a half days of painting. And that's not including last fall when we put the initial coat of the primer on them. But they're all done. I've got five large, very large, and one medium and two small flags. I will show you them now that they are finished. <laughs> Upside down. Happy 4th of July. God bless America. There's the medium. There's another small.